hello guys welcome to Provan youtube channel okay on this video you're going to learn how to uh, resolve forces and please if you have not subscribed to my channel please check the subscription button and subscribe and please comment so that we can interact anything you don't understand you comment and i reply you thank you very much let's start so you're going to learn something about force system so we're going to, from today's uh, video you're going to learn about uh, how forces are resolved so when forces are given to us in different quadrants how are we going to resolve these forces so let's start so first we should have the cartesian plane now note that this is the cartesian plane this side is y so here will be negative y at this side and this side is x and here will be negative x quadrant that so what we are going to learn here is we are going to learn how uh, if they give us forces in different quadrants how are you going to resolve it in x and y component so let's take the first quadrant so imagine that there's a force given to us and there's an angle given to us how are you going to resolve this force now with this force since it's in the first quadrant check the signs the s is positive and the y is positive and when resolving it in s component please remember to use cos so now this is the angle given to us now what you need to know is that mostly we work with the angle that is formed with the positive or the negative s component or the s line or the s axis so with this when forming it let's assume this is f so when um, resolving this is in the S component, you're going to get F, that will be F cos, cos theta, as simple as that. Now, with the Y component, it always goes to a sign. So since Y also is positive, you're going to get F sine. theta as simple as that so this is how we resolve forces in this quadrant let's move on to the next quadrant mm -hmm. when the next quadrant is given to us note if imagine that the angle was given to us at this place then you're going to subtract this angle from 90 and get this angle that is that is made with the x axis so here when resolving this note the y is positive and the s is negative so when resolving this what you need to know is you're going to resolve this in the x and y component knowing that the y is positive so when resolving it in the y component we are going to get positive f sine theta but with the s component you are going to get negative f cos theta because of the position of what the x it is negative so let's go to the next this one so on this one since the angle is here now we are going to resolve this but this the x is negative and the y is negative so it means that all will be negative so when resolving it you are going to negate every um force that is in x component you're going to get negative f cos 30 and with the y component you're going to get negative f sine 30 a uh, sine theta sorry for that so let's move on to the next the last quadrant with this last quadrant s is positive and y is negative so what you need to know is when resolving this in s and y component you're going to get s to be positive so you're going to get f cos Third, uh, cos theta and where this y is negative so you are going to get f negative f sine theta now what you need to take home message is that for s components use f cos theta it can be either negative f cos theta or positive f cos theta depending on the quadrant and with the y component you use f sine theta and that one, the negative and the positive depends on the quadrant. So we are going to take one example and we'll see that. But this example is not uh, normally based on this. This one was to brighten your mind on how we can resolve forces. So this example is consider two forces F1 and F2 acting on a joint as shown. So we are considering these two forces. This is F1 and F2. It's acting at the joint and this is V acting. So we are supposed to find the co uh, component acting along u and v so what you are what you are supposed to find here is that we are 
finding the FV and the FU. That is the forces acting on U and V axis. You are, to, you are supposed to determine the magnitude respectively. So let's see how we start. So with this, now we can transfer this line, this line here. You can transfer it here. That is using the uh, parallelogram rule. So we can transfer it here and we'll join this. So we have a nice triangle here. Note that this force or this length is the same distance here. So we can label it as FU. That is, let's assume this is F. So FU and the other side FV. So with this, what you need to know is that we are now finding what our main purpose is to find FV and FU. So we need to use any of the rules, either sine rule or cosine rule. So we can use sine rule. That is for this. But with sine rule, we need to get two angles or it's it's involved in four things so we need to get th three knowns and one unknown but with this side we have only one angle then for you know we can find this angle by using alternative angles so we know this theta here this angle here is alternating with this theta so we can get like 75 plus theta is equal to 180 so we can get this angle here so we now have theta to be 105 so we know this angle Therefore, we can use sine rule to find it. Now, F1, this is F1 over the angle. Now, note that this length corresponds with this angle. This length corresponds with this angle. The angle opposite to that. And this length also corresponds with this angle. Thank you for that. So, we know F1 over this angle, which is 105 degrees, is equal to FU, which is, uh, we are finding the unknown, over the 30 degrees. So, we try making FU the subject. And when you make it correctly, you know that you, you, are, not go, you are going to get Fu to be 2.07 kN. Since here, Fu sine 105 degrees equal to 4 kN sine 30 degrees. You are going to make Fu the subject. So you get 2.07 kN. Thank you for that. Let's move on to Fv. Now, with the same Fv, we know the theta here. This is phi. So we are supposed to find the phi here. But this, the interior... Uh, the sum of interior angle in a triangle sum up to 180 degrees so we can use that that is 30 plus 105 plus 5 is equal to 180 so we get 5 to be 45 degrees when you do it correctly now what you need to know is we are going to use sine rule again to find it so we we'll try making fv the subject here you know fv with the angle sine 45 over f1 sine 105 degrees you do that the correct way we are going to get F going to be 2.93 kilonewton. So this is what you need to do. Yes. So F is what? 4 kilonewton sine 45 over sine 105. And you get F going to be 200 and, uh, yeah, approximately 2.93 kilonewton. So we found the two forces, which is this. So the component is this and that. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe go to the subscription button and click on it and please let me have your comment comment so that we can interact thank you very much this is prof one